thank you. This is so good to us. We are proud of anyone like you God. We desire, oh God, this morning, your word comes. Let it come with power. Let it come with your spirit, with simplicity. The Lord may understand. Open our hearts, Lord. Make them part in the Lord, your word. We find a place to go. The Lord shall bear fruits to hundred folds. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Yes, in our, our area of discussion this morning is a discipleship. Discipleship is one of the one of the areas that have been really promoted in our church. And it's a high time as we speak of revival in this generation that we understand. Fishing out the disciples, the, the new believers, or the young ones, is not enough. After you fish them, they are come to the question, then what next? And even unto us, all of us that we have been in the church, and maybe we have not had an opportunity to sit and a discipleship. I pray that God will help us to understand the place of discipleship in our lives. Even as we seek the desire to grow and to increase in the faith. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So, discipleship itself is it's the process of helping new believers or new converts in the church to attain a Christ like lifestyle through spiritual leadership. It is also the lifestyle. Of conforming people to the image of Christ Jesus. The Bible says in Romans 8, I think verse 29 to that, that uh, and in like we use the basic Bible if we have it, that, uh, that God knew what he was doing from the beginning. He decided from the outset to shift the lives of those who love him along the same lines as the line of his son. The sun stands fast in the line of humanity he restored. We see the original and intended shape of our lives there in him. After God made that decision of what his children should be like, he followed it up by calling people by name. After he called them by name, he set them on solid basis with himself. And then, after getting them established, he stayed with them to the end, gloriously completing what he had begun. I want you to note this, that after God made the decision of what his children should look like, it's not a matter of what we desire or what we want in our hearts to be like. It's about what God intended, what he decided that we should look like. It's very important to know that that God desires we be conformed to this image of the Son. And one of the ways we can be conformed to that image is through discipleship. After you have received Christ Jesus, then what next? Now in discipleship, that is where we will teach you what next. So we need to know that. Then again, discipleship, it encompasses two people, a spiritual mentor and a mentee. Then who is a mentor? We need to be serious here. A mentor is that person that regardless of age, a person that is born again, remember we are talking about the kingdom here, it's not about business. A person that is born again, truly born again for that, they have sound doctrine. And then their spiritual growth is physical, phys it is physical, it is evident. It's not a matter of question, like whether brother so and so is born again. It is visible. Praise the Lord. Because it's, we are like a city that is built on a hill. Praise the Lord. It cannot be hidden. So if truly you are born again, you cannot hide it. We will see it. So we need to be very careful to know that this person is truly born again, regardless of age. They are also of some doctrine. And their spiritual growth can be visibly seen. It's not hidden. 
and then a menti is any person, any convert or a young believer that is willing to submit in obedience to the call to be conformed to the image of Christ Jesus. That is a menti. Anyone really in the church, any convert, and then any young believer in the church. Then we have to ask ourselves another question. Then what does the Bible say about discipleship? Discipleship said it was begun by Jesus himself. And even from all the way from creation, after man himself, after man fell and he sinned, and he was cast away from the presence of God, God was in the agenda of calling man back. And he began to disciple man. We see that directly from Abraham. God calling him and sent him apart from the people. So he realized discipleship will demand you to come from the crowds, come out of them. Then now come see a person to mentor you and the led of the Spirit of God. It was the plan of God from the beginning. He began to disciple men. Then Jesus came to confirm it. And it is very practical with Jesus. He began with his own disciples. After calling them, he taught them, sat with them. I'm very sure if Jesus and not being the disciples, maybe they would not have been able to do what he wanted them to do. He called them, sent them. Actually, the Bible says Jesus called them to be with them that he sent them. What were they doing when they were together? He was discipling them, teaching them, showing them practically how things should be done. And that is what we do in discipleship. We are trained practically. It is about prayer. We do it practically. Reading the Bible practically. Sivia practically. If it is which is practical in discipleship. Then I I related several things that the Bible says about discipleship. And one of them is that discipleship is a command. It's not an option. In as much as we have said that God determined that He wants us to be conformed, that is a is a it's something that is a must. It's not an option. As long as we are in the church, discipleship for us is not an option. The reason why we are having a church with the believers who are not even stable, believers who have not mastered the place of prayer, that have not mastered. The, the discipline of reading the word. People who are rising up with doctrines that we cannot even tell where they are coming from is because they are taking discipleship as an option. We be saying that you don't want discipleship. They teach the things of God. What do you want us to teach you? This one. No. It's, it's a must. As long as you want to conform, if you want to go by the patterns of God, discipleship is a must. It's not, let us stop taking the things of God as if they belong to a certain group of people. God has taken us equally. In fact, all of us, we are the children of God. And if indeed we are the children of God, God wants the best for us. God knew that there will be a generation that we need to be disciples. That is why He raised men before you came. There are men who grew before you came. They were born again before you were born, born again. Why? God has to, there is a need for discipleship. Then those men have been blessed in the church to wait for us, young believers, people who are passionate, that we may be discipled also. And we are discipled as a man only to disciple others. Sometimes I ask myself a question. We sing so much. Very passionate about a new generation. Then we are not careful of that generation. We are not careful of that generation. That's why it comes, and then the generation is part. And you see, the world has mastered these things. Because they have realized the child is not a blessing discipleship, they are creating their own discipleship. What children are young, in the television, things are there, they are being cycle. Because it's about teaching and learning. The things they are done practical, they go and practice them. Why? Because the church is not, we are not taking that as a, as a command and a way of being God to be disciple. 
Then all the world is taking that place, saving people. And then we want to reduce everything that we saw in the meeting in the church. Because we are having the same issue. No, we will not accept that. Not take that. If you read in uh, Matthew 20, 18, 20, you know me because of time. And I'm reading from the message Bible. I know you paraphrase as a uh, certain phrase. The word says that God, this was Jesus speaking to the disciples. He told them, God authorized and commanded me to commission you. See, Jesus is not saying that God authorized and commanded me that I may, that I should, is a command, commission you. Then he continues to say that you go out, train, I want you to mark this word, go out and train everyone that you meet, far and near, in this way of life, marking them by baptism the threefold name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then, now we have trained them and they are born again, they are in the church. This is very important. And then instruct them in the practice of all I have commanded you. You know what? Instruct them. They need instruction. They need instruction. Then number two, discipleship is a tool of doctrine preservation. I take you to Deuteronomy 6. When Moses was commissioning the, the people of Israel, he told them that these things God has commanded me that I teach you and you will teach them to your children and to your grandsons. When you sit, when you stand, or when you walk on the way, teach them. But now what watch this? These people we are not careful with that. They never taught their children. They were so reluctant. They sat down and kept it with them. It is so risk for you for God to give to give you a package and then you keep it to yourself. You're only becoming a manager. You are a steward, not a manager. When God gives you a package and you keep it for yourself, you are not only risking your life, but the next generation of you, and maybe your children and your grandchildren. So in judges, there comes again and the Bible says that after Joshua and the fathers, they are rested and they were really impressed with their grandfather, their, their, their grandparents and their, their forefathers, they are those and the generation that made them knew the Lord, all the things they had done. Reason, there was no discipleship. There was no transfer of information from them to their children again. And what comes is very evident if you are a person who studies the Bible. There were cats until Jesus came. Cats. They are running to Baha. They are the other side running to the other things of the world. Things they did not knew. Actually, the Bible says things that even their forefathers did not practice, they began to practice. It is a risk. And when Paul was speaking to Timothy's son, he told him that these things you have learned from me. Teach and trust to reliable men who are competent to teach others. Are we together? There is a lot of importance in discipleship. That people, it's a way of preserving doctrine and sound doctrine of Christ Jesus. And then when it is preserved, it is handed over down to the next generation, the next generation, the next generation. And then what you will see after that is a church full of fire and the presence of God with the people who understand the call. Many of us, we, we pretend to be known, but what we know is not that we are born again, period. This human is founded on mysteries, and these mysteries are in the hands of men. You cannot buy them. You cannot buy them. They are in men. And you need to sit an armor to teach you, to train you the things of God. Yeah. Then, discipleship is a platform of fellowship and learning. This is said earlier. That God, Jesus called the disciples that they be with them. They fellowship together. They could ask questions, they could ask to be guided. And Jesus was there for them. 
there was fellowship. There was fellowship. And learning, there was learning. Now, there is an Australian voice that preaches against discipleship. It will be telling you, you don't need to be disciples. I can pray. I can read the Bible. That is an Australian principle. And it is a voice preaching to you. And let me tell you something. To reject discipleship is the highest level of pride. It means you don't honor men that God has lifted. And anyone that does not have the spirit of honor can never rise. I'm telling you. Even if you jump up, you will still fall. Even if you think you know, you will forget. And it attempt that even that what you think you know, you cannot even complete it. Because you reject it. It is a, the highest level of right. We must learn that and be very careful. And then, uh, if you read, read in Acts 2, for 1 and 4, the Bible says that they committed themselves to the teaching of the apostles and they life together, the common will and prayers. Do you know, and these people, the Bible says, at that time, three thousands gave their lives to Christ. What next thing do they do? Discipleship. They committed themselves. They were going to say this, you read the next chapter. There was more revival after that time. There was a lot of rampant revival in that place. And that's why the gospel came to us. They committed themselves. They were discipled. And they, they were set on fire in the place of discipleship. You can also read that uh, in uh, you can also read Romans 10, 14 to 17 and also Mark 3 and 14. Then, discipleship is not a one-time event. It's a long-life lifestyle. Nobody is too old or too grown or too big to be taught. We have said, discipleship is not a matter of age. No. You can even be discipled by a first year who God has lifted even beyond you. It is the choice of God to choose who he lifted more than who. It's not a matter of human decision. It is God who decides that I need to live this for this purpose. And when you meet such a person, submit, learn. 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 Then, now, what, what kind of discipleship does Jesus desire? Now, there has been a lot of compromise in this subject in the church. When we are born again, the Bible says in John 1, 12 to 13, that they that accept the Son, they are given to be sons of God, children, not born of human accord, but of the Spirit of God. Now, God's original plan for coming back to man is to raise sons, not servants. Praise the Lord. We are so much puffed up with the one to be seen in the, in the pulpit, I want to be seen living. You forget that you need to be a son. Sons. Sons. Sons are what God desires. God does not desire people who are puffed up with, with the desire to be seen. God wants sons. Sons know their father's business. Sons relate to the father. Sons are always said, go do this. Take this blessing there. Do that, do that. That is not us. God desires sons. So, God's original plan for discipleship is sons may be produced. Sons. Oh. If we know the father as sons, I'm telling you, we will be pleased to obey what he tells us. We will be pleased to do what he demands because we are sons. And sons are made for inheritance. So if, if we, we do discipleship to become leaders, at the beginning, when you miss it and desire to become a leader, you missed it from the beginning. It 
It's about We must also understand this that children are very fragile and they need a lot of care. Yeah. Even if you hear someone that God even may trust you with someone to disciple, you must understand that children are very fragile and they are very weak. Very weak. They need to be handled with care. With a lot of care. And something else is that even as God desires sons, He desires that they will be conformed to His image, not your image. Praise the Lord. And don't push him or her into the praise and worship ministry because you are there. Maybe God is calling you to go and fish outside. Maybe then God is calling him to be a kingdom financier. And you begin confusing him or her the early stages of a problem. No. Sons conform to the humans according to the will of God. Then, again, God desires a discipleship that is centered on the kingdom of God. It's not about teaching them what you think is best. It's about letting the kingdom dwell in them. It's about the will of God dominating their lives. Is about making them understand the need to glorify God, not you. That is the kind of discipleship Jesus desires that produces sons, not servants, and discipleship based on the kingdom, and and discipleship of transformation through the new world of the mind. When someone is born again, they are marked with the seal of the Holy Spirit that guarantees their salvation. And the work of that Holy Spirit is to help them understand the deeper things of God. See, the things of God, they need to be designed by the Spirit of God. That is why the Bible says that the message of the kingdom or of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. They don't have the Spirit of God. That is why when the Spirit is in that young person that desires grow, God teaches them without the Spirit. Actually, let me read it. That, uh, if I read it. Hmm. That is the version one that he says. It is in Christ that you, once you had the truth and believed it, now, this message of your salvation, once you believe, found yourself all free, signed, he said, signed, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Spirit. Now, this is what I like. This is the first down payment. As you wait for another infilling of the Spirit, you already have the Spirit in you. What you receive is a promise. Keeps on receiving the spirit, and your cup keeps on overflowing. And that spirit is the first installment of what is coming. And I remind that we are, we get everything God has planned for us. That we get everything God has planned for us. So as we teach them, we understand they have the spirit of God. And when we teach them the basics of the kingdom, the spirit will help them understand in discipleship. Then, yeah, those are the three types of discipleship Jesus desires that produces sons, not servants, discipleship based on the kingdom, and then and discipleship that uh, accepts that brings transformation because they have the spirit. Then, how does salvation empower discipleship? I know most of us, maybe. We ask ourselves, how can I do salvation and I'm not born again? Salvation is one of 
the greatest need of us, of someone who's not a believer. And then when that person has believed, the next thing they need is discipleship. And discipleship is what will bring transformation. So, as salvation itself brings a reaper. We have seen it in John 1, 12, 13. Brings a reaper. Now, this reaper renders you as a child. It is very easy for you to be discipled after the first moment of you giving your life to Christ and when you are staying here and you begin to post feeling you are the boss. It becomes very hard. Because immediately you are born again. Imagine you are washed away and there is a void in your heart. That void needs information. And if you don't feed the right information, the world is very fast. It will feed you. And then, now there comes a problem. A person who is disinformed. It is better to be uninformed than to be misinformed. It's better. When you are misinformed, it will cost you time to unlearn. Because now, when you are misinformed, you don't only need to be informed. You need a turn around. Then you can begin to be informed again. But when you are fresh from here, you don't need to be informed. Salvation places you at a place where when you are filled with that information, it will stick, it will find a place. You are very fresh. That is why the people say that you don't buy a new white skin and put it on a whole new thing. When when we give our life to Christ, most of us hear this church. How it challenge you. Most of us, when we are called for establishing trainings, the new believers, we run away. Do you know what it produces? When you leave this place and you're running away, the next time we'll see you here again repeating the same prayer. Why? You neglected the place of discipleship in your life. This is Salvation, when you are born again, it gives you, you become a child. And you don't know, you feel, you are there somewhere you are. You are not like a person that has been sitting there, gave their life some years ago, and they are not, they were not disciples. You are very, it is very easy for you to be taught. Very easy for you to be taught. And even I can relate it to very simple. Even when we join first class, it is very easy for us to attend the classes. When you stay second year, third year, hey, eat a bounce. No go do, eat a bounce. You are just there at a bounce. And a bounce, bounce, put the wrong position. There is something that looks bad in your heart, but you don't give it to God. Let me tell you. It will make you. Oh God, thank you. Ezekiel 6, verse 20, 2 to 26. Because it's that I keep you, I give you arms of flesh. Now, when you are born again and you stay, what? What Lucifer will give you? He is a heart of stone that cannot be taught. You need that. At that point of salvation, God has given you a heart of flesh that can be broken, can be tapped from this side and this. And then, by that, you are able to, to be taught. It's very important to understand that. And yeah. Then very briefly, how to live a life of devotion to Jesus in every day's life. Number one, embrace a life of prayer. If you want to be committed to discipleship, you want to live a life of devotion. Embrace prayer. Prayer is a channel of communication to God and communication to His relationship. You cannot tell us you love Christ the Lord because it is easy to say, I'm born again, I love the Lord. Do you communicate with that Lord you love? It's very easy to say that I love the Lord, but do you communicate? Then, prayer will fuel your inner man and the inner man will be able to sustain the physical man. You can defeat temptations and sin. And anything that comes. You can define that in, I think, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, and you, 
It is one who says that men out to hold his bread. Men out to hold his bread. And men here doesn't mean men. Man, it means people, all of us, children of God. We hold to pray. Number two, embrace personal Bible study. Embrace it. Embrace it. Now, the Bible, let me call it the volume of the book, is contained itself the exact representation of who God is. When you read the Bible, God is revealing itself to you from the man. He begins to read you who he is, who he is. And then, thank you. Then, you might read, I think Romans 15, then the other thing, can read and embrace consistency. If you pray today, if you don't pray tomorrow, the next time you pray is next week, <laughs> there is no problem. If you read the Bible today and you don't read tomorrow, the day after tomorrow you read after one week, no problem. Consistency brings the results. Consistency builds the ability to sustain and display. That is what we need to know. Press the Bible prayer, press personal Bible study, and advance and impress consistency. Lastly, value is calculated. Value is not what is calculated. Value. And when you calculate value, you have relevance in the house of God. Let us pray. Father, we are grateful. Thank you for your word. We desire to be people who are teachable spirits to be disciples. Help us. We trust you for the grace, Lord, to have a teachable spirit and the revelation of your word and the desire you have for us in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us to be this spirit. Help us to cultivate consistency and to exert in prayer the discipline of the word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Give it thanks.